Hello booktube and welcome back to Read Becca. As usual, I am weeks and weeks behind on tags and I really wanted to prioritize this one and then the weeks just kept slipping by, but we're here. We've got it. This is the Let's Get Outside with Books tag from Miss Reads A Lot originally, but I was tagged by both Gina Stanier and Shelley Swearingen. So, so thank you very much to both of them for tagging me in this. This is a great tag. It's all about the outdoors and our love for the outdoors or perhaps hate of the outdoors <laughs> if you choose to interpret the questions that way. Um, I am not outdoors today because it is literally a million degrees outside. I live in the, the Midwest, um, in the southern part of the Midwest where it gets very hot and humid. We are currently under a pollen warning. So if you go outside right now, you can literally smell the pollen in the air. Um, you see the cars covered in just a yellow dust really great times outside right now, so I'm not out there. But uh, I do regularly share footage of the outdoors in my weekly catch-ups. Uh, I'm out with my dog very often. Um, I enjoy taking my cats outside on a harness. Um, yeah, so I, I do like getting outside when it is palatable, which is about four weeks out of the year here in the Midwest. So anyway, let's get into the prompts here. So. Uh, prompt number one is Into Thin Air. What is one of your favorite books about or set in the outdoors? So I have a couple here, <laughs> um, but they're related. So the first is going to be The Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham. And this is very like sweet and quiet pastoral countryside. This is following these little animals who are a, a group of friends, a community living on the riverbank. And um, I've got this lovely junior illustrated edition. You can see some of the pictures are just beautiful. And it's a very low drama, except when their one troublesome friend, the wealthy toad, gets into trouble. And then I have a second book that is also related, The Riverbank. Um, and this is also stories from The Wind in the Willows and Got just beautiful illustrations in both of these. I love these little animals on the side. So I love Wind in the Willows. There's also a follow-up more recently that was done by a different author. Um, Cage Johnson did a little illustrated book also titled The River Bank that was kind of modernized in a way. Um, it was not changed in terms of the setting or the main characters, but she added some women characters. <laughs> So I really love it for that, for having, um, I, it was a rabbit who was an, an authoress, uh, and it's just really great because that was very lacking in the original work. So, so I really enjoy all of those in that very outdoory setting. So prompt number two is uh, Winter Dance. This is the story of Gary Paulson running the Iditarod for the first time, even though he isn't particularly good at it. Do you have a hobby or skill that you keep attempting even if you are not particularly good at it? I would say most of my hobbies. I don't really excel at, at any of my hobbies at all. Um, probably crochet is the one that I would go with because I, I did as a child and was never good. Um, I don't think I really got significantly beyond chain stitch, which means nothing to you if you don't crochet, but, but go with it. That's rudimentary, like the very first stitch you learn. Um, yeah, so I, I kind of stuck there and, and never went any farther um, and was very, very uneven. And then I set aside for decades and just picked it up a couple years ago. And so I have been doing crochet more recently and I enjoy it a lot um, and I continue to do it, but I'm not very good. I still have not learned how to do patterns. Um, I, I just follow YouTube videos and learn to make things that way because it's easy enough to follow if I want to just, you know, kind of futz around and make a blanket. I can just look up a blanket pattern. It's, it's not that hard to, to follow once somebody gives you the entire instructions. So, so that's probably a crochet. Uh, number three is Wild. This is the story of Cheryl Strayed hiking the PCT after the death of her mother. Recommend a book where the central theme is dealing with grief. Um, so I have for that one The Night Wood by Dale Bailey, and this is a fabulous, really, really underrated book. I think I think it actually won a British Fantasy Award the year it came out. So it got some, some award love, but not very much 
popular love. And I can understand why it's a very quiet book, but this is very bookish. Um, it follows initially a young boy. The kind of preamble to the actual story is, is him finding this book um, as a child and then that connecting to his whole life. And so we have him as a, as a child um, growing up with this book of dark fairy stories. And then once he hits university, he is doing research into the author, this kind of Victorian author who was writing dark fairy stories in a creepy old manor house. And that leads him to specialize in this author. And he meets um, the author's uh, relative who he winds up marrying. And so that's all the preamble to the actual story. Uh, the, the actual story really begins with him and his wife moving to this manor house in, in the English countryside um, where this author had written all these dark fae stories next to a, a dark fairy wood. And there's these questions of is it real, is it fake? But more importantly, the reason to move, um, they left America to go to this English country manor, is because their daughter has died. So it's giving us both their perspectives as they're dealing with the grief and the way they're each processing it very differently. So it's a really, really powerful book. I, I absolutely loved this the first time I read it. Um, this is really high on my list to get to as a reread as well. So um, yeah, In the Dark Wood. Then the next uh, prompt number four, Into the Wild, follows Chris McCandless, who travels to remote Alaska and unfortunately passes away in the wilderness. Does the idea of living off the grid or away from society appeal to you? So uh, I think I have not read the book, but I have seen the movie. And as soon as I saw the movie, I was like ready to sell all my belongings and take off <laughs> because that does appeal to me. Um, I think more theoretically than really, because I, and I think everybody has, has probably said this, like the bathroom and the shower are really, really necessities. Um, I, I do like having a shower every day. So I don't know how well I would do with that, but I love the idea of being unencumbered and not necessarily having anything tying me down. Um, I had the same sort of appeal when I watched Nomadland, where we have this very resistance to corporate culture and being tied down. Um, in, in many ways, you know, people moving around in order to follow work that's available to them. So I think that my idea of kind of walking away would be the opposite of what the point of this question is, where it's like walking away from society. I would be thinking of being more dependent on each other in society. Like I would want to walk away from my stuff because we have enough stuff. Like we have enough to go around. Like you have a shower, maybe I don't need a shower as well. We can all share, you know? Um, but that is very stigmatized in our society where it, it, people are kind of told and look down on if they don't have their own house, their own car, um, where I know mass transit does not exist basically in my area. There's hardly any good public transit. It just doesn't work, even though I'm in a major metropolitan area. So, you know, things like that, where the world is actively making it difficult to do that. Um, but I think in terms of this question, it's more, would you go off and live a hermit life? I think I could do that as well if I had a bathroom and a shower. Uh, I could be totally isolated in the woods, but I, I would need like running water. So <laughs> rambly thoughts on that one. And then number five is A Walk in the Woods. Story of Bill Bryson and cats hiking the Appalachian Trail. What is a book with a really interesting friendship? So I have Good Omens by Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett. So not only does it have an interesting author friendship, it has an interesting friendship because this book features primarily an angel and a demon who are friends. And it's it's so epic and they, they are followed through time, through this, this massive story of the, the revelation style end of the world, Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse and all. And it's, it's so fun because they, they don't want the world to end. They have, over the, the years, hundreds and hundreds of years of being on Earth, realized they really like Earth. They like all the mundane humanities. And so they, they kind of start working together to, to thwart it. 
So on top of that, there's also a child friend group, one of whom is the Antichrist. And it's really interesting to see the power dynamics within that child group play out. Uh, I, I really liked it because it, it does kind of follow um, becoming a bully, I would say, in, in many ways. But overall, yeah, this the angel demon friendship is what makes this, and it's even better in the miniseries adaptation. So definitely check check this out if you haven't. It's got a great friendship. All right, so then on to number six, we have Adrift, the story of Stephen Calligan's time lost at sea. Do you like the water? I I do like the water. Um, I randomly became. A person who gets seasick after years. My dad had a boat and I think I was maybe 12 or 13 and went from being fine on the water to getting horribly seasick. So I've pretty much gotten seasick most times when I'm on a boat. I still can get on ferries and, and be okay. Um, I've not taken any cruises or anything. I don't know if I would try, but uh, yeah, I get horribly seasick. However, I, I have done it anyway. Um, I've gotten snorkeling and stuff. And I'm also a person who is terribly afraid of deep water. So that's my one actual fear um, that I, I would say, I, it's not irrational, like it's a, it's a valid fear <laughs> to be afraid because if you can't see the water, you, you don't know what's down there and there are things in there. There's gross stuff, there's scary stuff, like it makes sense to be scared of deep water. So so yeah, I, I still have you know gone in the ocean, I've done snorkeling and paddle boarding and stuff in the ocean. So so I don't let it stop me. I do it anyway, but I am horribly afraid of it. Uh, number seven is Hatchet, a fictional story of a young boy who is in a plane crash while traveling to Alaska and has to survive with only a hatchet. What is your favorite survival story? So the one that came to mind like the most prominently I don't have and is completely the opposite of this is this book called Last Breath where um, they they wrote short stories basically of different ways of dying <laughs> and so you are in first person perspective going through a type of um, extreme death due to the elements basically uh, so I think the first one if I remember it's been probably two decades since I read it uh, the first one was exposure in the cold and so I really liked that because it was just going through the scientific stuff and, and talking about, you know, how, what you would experience as you're going through this. So, so that one is my, my bad answer, but I really loved that book and I've never seen anybody talk about it. And my, my proper answer about survival is maybe an odd one, but uh, The War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells. Um, this is all as it says about a world war of the world, but first contact with aliens and that being a war and they're significantly stronger than humanity. And so the outcome and the survival of mankind rests on, on something very unexpected, I would say. And so, so I think survival is, is very important to this and um, how, how little in control we are, I would say, is, is also a big element. But yeah, I, I think survival definitely comes into this one. Then I have uh, the last one, I think. Yeah, number eight, Perfect Storm. Story of a fisherman that were lost at sea during a huge storm. Do you like stormy weather? I do. And as I said, I live in the Midwest, so we are in the midst of what would normally be our tornado season, and we so far have not gotten any major warnings, no major storms, no hail. That's great. Uh, it's very common to see hail sails at car lots here throughout the spring. So yeah, I love I love the storms. I love our great thunder and lightning. I have shared some footage of, of the crazy storms occasionally in the past. So yeah, yeah, I like a good storm. So that is it for the prompts. As far as tagging people, I think I'm gonna just tag people that I've seen doing videos outside. So um, this is not comprehensive by any means, but, uh, and I didn't check if these people had, had done this already. So if you haven't done this, no obligation. If you have, um, yeah, just skip it. Uh, I will say another bibliophile reads, uh, has been doing some great like back porch videos lately. Um, Paper Traveler, I think it's the Paper Traveler, uh, 
we have gotten some great garden tours and stuff. Um, book buds are like always filming outside, which is fabulous. And one book, one review has been doing like biking footage and little tours of flowers and stuff with vlogs. So yes, yeah, lots of out, outdoor, outdoor footage there. So I think that's it for the tag. Thank you so much for watching. And if you feel like doing the tag, consider yourself tagged.